All right, this looks like a really, really awesome setup. Um, there's a reason why these books are here. I'm not going to tell you, but you will figure it out. All right, welcome to the upstream panel. My name is Michael Hausenblas. I'm a developer advocate at Red Hat. Uh, you have to earn it, Chris. <laughs> um, and we have an awesome uh, team here. We have uh, Christian here. We have uh, Chris here. We have our very own Paul here, who you already know. We have uh, Gary here, and we have Dan here, who you also know from early on. You probably remember, right? Do you have your swear jar still around? It's down there. We need to swear. Is, is that what that is? You, <laughs> might, you might need it. I'd have to use bills in a minute, though. So. <laughs> All right. So the format is, I have a few questions, like simple, easy ones prepared. And I'm going to expect that you give them the hard ones, right? Can you give them the hard ones? Oh, come on. All right. I'm going to start the beer right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we have beer for everyone? Okay. So quick warm up, like everyone, maybe you know, a minute or so about your background, who you are, what you're doing, and uh, yeah, what do you do for a living? Let's start here. Do you? Hi, I'm Christian Posta. I'm a chief architect of cloud application development at Red Hat. I work closely with our customers to help them build distributed systems. Um, I guess we're calling that microservices. Uh, DevOps, all, that, all those buzzy word type things. Uh, I have a background in integration and messaging. I was a contributor to uh, projects like Apache ActiveMQ and uh, a little bit to Kafka. And I enjoy working on open source and helping our customers. So what's that? Uh, the, the project that I've been uh, pretty excited about for the last uh, eight or nine months is called Istio. What's that? <laughs> I, I keep on asking you. Yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't sure if you were. No, gonna... no, no, no. I, I, I want to learn. Um, so Istio is a an implementation of a uh, architectural pattern we're calling service mesh that moves some of the uh, more complicated distributed systems patterns that we have typically associated with language frameworks or centralized orchestration engines and so on into a decentralized set of uh, of infrastructure. Cool. And I expect we're going to learn more about these two. Right? I hope so. Chris, who are you? What do you do for a sure. living? Uh, my name is Chris Anizik. Uh, you'll excuse me. I just got off the plane, so trying to, to revive myself here. But uh, I have the fun job of uh, running the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So I serve as CTO there. I'm not sure people are familiar with the organization, but um, projects like Kubernetes, Prometheus, you know, uh, you know, essentially live inside this foundation where we support these projects under a neutral setting where a bunch of companies come together without worrying that uh, one entity controls uh, everything. So we put on KubeCon, CloudNativeCon, and so on. Uh, in previous lives, I've worked uh, on uh, you know, Fedora, Gentoo, done a lot of stuff in the JVM, worked on Eclipse a long time ago. So I've been involved in open source for, for, for quite a while. So it's kind of fun kind of being in the, in the foundation neutral, uh, neutral party setting these days instead of working for a company. <laughs> And can like everyone join the CNCF or do everyone? Is, yeah, everyone's welcome to join. We uh, you know we especially love uh, end users. So for us, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of vendors involved since they were kind of some of the progenitors of a lot of these projects. But we definitely love seeing companies using you know Prometheus or Kubernetes at scale, and uh, we love to have our end users share kind of their their horror stories uh, away from vendors, just amongst themselves. So, but feel free to reach out to me if you have questions on that. And if there is no uh, cloud native meetup yet in your town or yes. city nearby, I consider doing one. I'm running one for Ireland, so you know. You can yeah, definitely. Some. We sponsor meetups. We uh, if there's a city that you're involved in, um, you know, we help pay for pizza, beer, and all that wonderful uh, stuff that's required to fuel these things. Awesome. Paul needs no introduction. <laughs> Next. <No. laughs> Tell us a little bit more. What, what we haven't learned yet. Uh, so. I work, uh, in addition to Service Catalog, I also work on multi-cluster at Red Hat. Uh, I have a team, actually, that works on both Service Catalog and multi-cluster. Um, before, I've actually been working on OpenShift since OpenShift V1, uh, and it's, it's been a, quite a journey. Things have changed pretty significantly. Uh, before Red Hat, I uh, worked in equities trading and health insurance enrollment. Awesome. So we know from Dan that he doesn't like the D word. But what do you like? 
I guess now I like the C word. Uh, <laughs> Brian? <laughs> you like to freeze out. <laughs> Any, anything you want to add to early on? No? Your... Um, no. no. Okay, no, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Gives more time to Gary, because Gary represents an awesome project, the Jaeger project, right? With my German background, I say Jaeger, you say yeah. probably Jager. Or, or no, no yeah, it's fine. Jaeger? Yeah. All right, take it away. Um, yes, I'm uh, Gary Brown. I'm a principal software engineer. I work for uh, Middleware Management Group in Red Hat. Um, the main area that I work on with um, some others is uh, distributed tracing technologies. Um, so for almost two years now, I think we've been involved in a project called Open Tracing, um, which is um, one of the, the projects under the uh, CNCF Foundation. Um, and more recently, um, uh, Uber, um, they uh, open sourced the project, uh, which is an open tracing native uh, distributed system called Jaeger. Um, that was open sourced in April last year. Um, and more recently in December, that also became a, a CNCF project. So we're, we're working very closely with Chris on, on those. Cool. So. The, the, the one-on-one on what is distributed tracing, I would say like if you have your developer mode in, in, in a browser and you look down there, you see all these lines, kind of that just for many machines. Like how do, how do you sell distributed tracing? Um, yeah, I mean distributed tracing has become more and more important in cloud native environment because um, you know, in a highly distributed application where you've got a large number of microservices, it becomes very difficult to actually understand you know, how your application is executing, what the performance problems are, where, maybe where the faults are occurring. So um, distributed tracing essentially allows you to capture um, an execution, um, the, the, the execution path of your business transaction as it's going through um, the, the microservices. And, and it does that um, by passing sort of context information with all the requests that are propagated through the microservices. Right, so it gives you an overview how something flows through different microservices. Yeah. You can use it for troubleshooting, performance issues, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Cool, awesome. I have a first very easy question, and then I hand over to you. Dear audience, so prepare yourself, warm up. So what first open source project you were active in, any kind of governance, doesn't matter, and any kind of, like, it doesn't have to be code or whatever. Any, the first open source project you contributed to were active in. Let's start in the middle here. Paul. OpenShift. <laughs> <coughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I never doubted that. Dan. I don't know, it's so long ago. Vax. Uh, <laughs> uh, Red Hat Linux. Uh, um, like GNU, GNU C, I don't know, it's, it's back probably before Red Hat, so it's nice. been a long time. Nice. Yeah. Chris? I, probably Slackware a long time ago would be my guess. Whew. I had you done for Mesos, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, a project called Spring Integration from the, the Spring communities. Cool. Gary? Um, I think the first one was an Eclipse plugin for a um, W3C choreography description language. Nice. Awesome. A long time ago. Quite, quite some uh, <laughs> distribution here. Yeah. First I, question of the audience. Actually, I want to redo it. I worked back on Kerberos, X Windows, uh, Project Athena, so back. Oh. In, <laughs> love it. I love it. Back when they were being done at MIT. Are you really? I, I, I'm friggin' old. Like we're, we're roughly the same age, right? Yeah. Mid 40, right? I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm mid 40s. <laughs> First question from the audience. Who has a question for the gentleman? Come on, guy. Right. Not that bad. Yeah, there is, right. there is. Oh, wonderful! And can you, can you please, with the, yeah. ah, the best? So you, you figured the pattern, right? <laughs> you ask a question, you get a book. Hello. Well, actually, we should have heard the question first, and then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have some Estio questions. Um, <laughs> I was just wondering, is it sort of ready to actually roll out and to, to put into play? So I've been playing with it in my own namespace with a demo app that comes with it. But I'm just wondering about putting it into our, you know, our dev integration environment and then do I go beyond that? Um, okay, so I'll take that first. Um, I would say you should be playing with it, uh, maybe POCing it, uh, exploring how it works. Um, I would not put it into production right now. Um, I think 
I think there's still a little bit more that has to happen in terms of hardening, in terms of performance, in terms of stability and security that need to go into, into place first. Cool. Cool. And you don't get a second book, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That's fine. That one looks big enough. Um, also, with the Steo, I noticed while installing it, it seems to have it's watching for events. I've noticed that I targeted it for my own namespace, but it seems to be creating secrets in all of the namespaces. So I'm just kind of wondering, what does it actually do? You know, like, what is the impact of installing it? So I see these secrets appearing everywhere, and people asking me questions, what the hell is this Dio doing? Um, I'm just wondering if there's other things and... It's, in, it's installing secrets. <laughs> yeah, there's secrets. Like, like oh, when you have the, the certificate authority stuff turned on? Or just in general? Uh, just in general, from what I've seen. Well, so Istio has, has a component in the control plane that's responsible for um, certificate management and certificate distribution and rotation. And we use that internally to, to build features like mutual TLS between services. And from, from that perspective, there are going to be certificates, there's going to be secrets installed into the, the different namespaces where your applications might be deployed for the purposes of mutual TLS. Those should be uh, mounted into the, the different pods. Um, but if you're seeing other random stuff, then I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Maybe you can open an issue. And I can yeah, maybe I mean, let's be, continue the discussion over the beer. It sounds like a very, yeah. like, I don't want to cut you short, but there are many, many questions. It looks like a very deep dive here. Can we, can we do that over, over yeah, the beer? Sure. Yep. Um, any other questions in between? Otherwise, I'll go next. There's a question in the back. You just want the book, right? Right. Okay. Hi, this is probably a question question for Chris. How, how do you successfully structure a neutral um, company that brings other people together? Uh, so CNC, yeah, uh, CNCF is technically a non-for-profit, you know, 501c6 organization under the Linux Foundation. So it is a neutral entity based on US law. So like every, all the IP developed and um, associated work is forever you know, will be part of, you know, a, a non-for-profit like, like CNCF. So um, by law, you know, all that work is neutral. Uh, then uh, we have bylaws associated with the organization that basically dictate, you know, how participation is done, which levels of membership, uh, you know, governing boards, technical boards, and user boards, and so on. And those were all kind of baked in when we formed the organization. Uh, but uh, essentially, the rules were done in a way where we tried to give everyone a voice from our end users to our technical people and to the people that actually are writing the kind of the bigger checks to, to fund um, kind of the bootstrapping organization. I, I hope that answers your uh, question, but uh, each of our projects within CNCF, we've taken uh, an approach where they get to kind of define their own governance and independence in some way. We don't force integration amongst projects. You'll see projects like Jaeger, Prometheus, and Kubernetes all kind of differently define how they run. Um, all they need to really have is a published governance document and fair way to elect additional maintainers. That's all we require of our projects, which is very different from other kind of foundations um, out there. Great question. Thank you. Um, we, we get another round. So if you, oh, if, if you want to go ahead, sure. Uh, I remember a while back I read a really interesting paper called um, Pivot Tracing. Um, and I wonder um, if I remember rightly, try and characterize it, it was a tracing framework that carried enough information around at runtime to establish causality um, between RPC calls. Uh, is uh, open tracing going to be able to learn from that and build on that, or what sort of direction might it go in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know the working detail, but um, I mean, the, uh, from what I understand, the you know one of the core principles is being able to, to propagate certain information from an upstream service and a downstream to, so that you can then add value to the information you're recording locally. Um, and I mean, in, in open tracing, there's a concept called baggage that is primarily in, intended to do that. So you can, um, as well as propagating the trace context the information between the services, you can add your own information. So um, I, I think the pivot tracing mechanism you know, sounds like it, they provide agent technology that will kind of you know, work out what needs to be done for you. Um, 
so I think the same kind of mechanisms could be built on top of um, open tracing. And I mean, as part of the open tracing project, we also have a, a contrib um, repo that where the, there's a large number of instrumentation, uh, your framework instrumentations done, and uh, we, we have a, the beginnings of a Java agent project there. Um, so maybe that's something that we can add you know, on top of that. Awesome, thank you. Okay, a uh, quick one from my side. If you compare infrastructure stuff, like for example, cryo monitoring uh, on the system level and so on. On the other hand, app level stuff, different kinds of programming languages, middleware stuff and so on. Which one, in your opinion, if you have one, you don't have to answer, but if you have one, which one is more important and or covered uh, in the context of Kubernetes or CNCF uh, right now? And maybe you know, what should change if there's something lacking? Whoever has. What, was the question clear? No, it was too long. More important to whom? To, to <laughs> us? Um, <laughs> well, as an expert, you probably be able to say like there's, there's a spot where there, there's something missing, right? Or is everything covered already? Infra versus like, okay, dev, ops, working together, that kind of thing. Start with me. Uh, if you have. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. Whoever. I could formulate potentially an answer. I mean, um, you know, from, from my perspective at least, I'm also involved in other initiatives out there. There's something called the Open Container Initiative, which I also help spin up in parallel with CNCF. Uh, but that's mostly focused on container standards. I, I, in my opinion, you know, my hope is that the infrastructure stuff eventually becomes more boring, right? You know, it just like, it's, it's there, you know, Kubernetes essentially is gonna be, you know, the analogy we like to use is like POSIX of the cloud or Linux of the cloud, right? Like it's just gonna be the default distributed systems API that every cloud supports that, you know, applications will eventually take advantage of. So uh, in, in the future, um, app, developers, app developers probably will not care, you know, how, you know, the infrastructure is laid out. So to me, I, I see the app layer becoming more exciting in terms of how we actually write apps now that we kind of have this Kubernetes being uh, POSIX of, of, of the cloud for lack of a better analogy. So that's my perspective at least, but I've been in the thick of this uh, standardization and uh, uh, making Kubernetes you know, pretty much available on all different cloud things for the last uh, couple of years, so. Cool. You were gonna say something, Paul, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> so my own personal theory is that I, I'm calling this the quantity theory of importance. There's only 100% importance total, right? And the things that you're working with, say, as a developer are important to you day to day. And sorry, Dan, but unfortunately, you work in an area that is becomes important to people when it breaks. And so it, you mean, if Dan does You mean his like job meltdown, right, meltdown inspector? Yeah. <laughs> so if Dan here does his job right, Which you'll never even think about it. Yeah. And Dan's very good at his job, so odds are you probably won't think about it. And uh, if, if things go well, you won't have cause to. So day to day, most people will relate the most to application level things. Mm -hmm. um, and since developers tend to experience and develop strong opinions about those things. Really? What do you not say? I, it does sound crazy. I have some empirical data to support this, though. Uh, that's basically it. You, you tend to think the things that you work with most are most important. But as soon as something breaks, important. Bam. <laughs> Any other opinions, Dan? Yeah. Um, I, I would, one of the things I think is interesting is I think there's a constant sway between, you know, for the first couple of years when I was working on containers, there was such a focus on devs, and ops was just a, a total afterthought. And, and um, so the last couple of years, I've been more concentrating on the ops side, saying, you know, how do we make these things more stable? And um, you, you weren't here for my <laughs> earlier talk, but I, uh, you know, my goal is to make the upside boring, um, you know, because it just works. And so, um, I, I I tend to agree that uh, we need to continue to work on the dev side. What I want to see on the dev side, though, is to lose the focus on doing this. And you know, the engineers are too concerned about building containers and doing things. Can, you know, the, the, if, if the primary focus of developers is on doing containers, we've sort of lost. You know, the primary focus on the developer should be on building his app, right? B building his, you know, 
the cell phone. When I'm building, I mean, building the equivalent of cell phone apps and, and getting microservices to that level. And I think, you know, when we get to serverless and, and some of this other stuff, that, that'll hopefully happen. But right now, I see too many people saying, you know, how do I get access to the Docker socket? Or how do I get access? How do I build a Docker file? And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You're a, Where is that? Uh, you're a PHP like app. Right? You're, you're writing PHP yeah. 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 Not only did he swear, but he said Docker at least three times. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, yeah. <laughs> I stopped counting. My talk is over. <laughs> <laughs> anybody got any change? Can anybody change? You're right on a change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chip in. Got a credit card. Okay. <laughs> Any other? Um, yeah, I think I think with the the availability of this type of infrastructure that we're talking about, this elastic infrastructure on <laughs> on prem or in in the cloud, I think once you move up to the level of the application, you know, not only has the stuff on the ops changed, but the way we build and design and architect those applications on this infrastructure has changed also. Um, and I think as we start to make the lower levels boring, mm -hmm. we're going to start to move up and say, oh, well, well now we've got to tackle these distributed systems problems at this level, at the application level. Um, and I think there's a, a lot of opportunity for in improvement there. And I think service measures are a great example for that as well. Uh, before you folks get another chance to earn books, quick question. Who does not know what upstream means? <laughs> okay. Who knows what upstream is? Now, technically, everyone should. OK. So upstream, from our point of view, from a vendor point of view, that is the open source project where we draw the things and build our product from, just in case that was not clear. So open source, right? Um, audience, question? <laughs> I, I Way you. in the back. One for you. I'm not sure he needs this book. Uh, probably, <laughs> he, well, he writes man. books on his own, but it doesn't matter. So, still a good read. Maybe you could write this book. Trust me, I do do need to read it. Um, I've got a very broad question that I think applies to the whole panel. Um, how do you keep up with everything that's going on in the container space? I know that for myself, I get an email every day from someone in my organization saying, what do you think about technology X? And I'm curious as to how you manage this challenge. <laughs> I'm also curious what the answers are. <laughs> a lot of airplane trips and... Yeah. Uh, Sounds <laughs> yeah. Sound sensible. Any tips for... <laughs> I would be lying if I said that I actually caught up with the entire container space. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I think it's impos impossible to kind of know, you know, at least in depth of like you know what each technology you know does and so on. I, I kind of have a unique perspective where I kind of have a very broad uh, perspective on kind of the tools out there and what people are working on. But it's hard to have like you know I'm not a security person, so I have really no idea how container security you know works. Right. So I think you know long plane rides uh, are good ways to catch up on things uh, and diving deep on the projects that you kind of care about or have ex you know background in is that's how I kind of try to keep up. I'm aware that I'm not on the panel, but it's part of my job, and I do it. I believe it, it's a full-time job, right? You could just, it, the whole day, just consuming stuff. Yeah. But like you also do hang out on Twitter a lot, and yeah. Slack, or whatever, and you catch up with, you know, oh, have you seen that? I'm using that. And that's probably a really good way, like, filter, let, let, let others do the filtering, and you do the filtering in your domain for others, um, newsletters or whatever. Um, recently became quite popular again. Yeah, I mean, in, in CNCF, we, we try to, at least our projects tend to be the projects that we think are, are good examples of projects in relative domains you should look at or care about. Right. Uh, but the landscape is massive. Like, there's so yeah. much stuff. We do it also internally, like newsletters for a certain domain saying, like, that happened last week. So it takes you, like, you know, 10 seconds to go over that and pick out the two or three things that might be interesting for you. And what then. my hope would be is that you could come to the OpenShift Commons and um, watch some of the weekly briefings because a lot of those, what I try and do is hit those topics so that you don't have to and can watch them in the leisure of your own homes on YouTube. Of course, of course the best answer is what Diane just said. <laughs> <laughs> we have another question, can I just? We have two. Instant delivery. He's got a question, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right behind you too. Hi. So, a lot of talk about technology. The bit that concerns me more with financial services is the whole enterprise workflow st side of things. I think it's probably a question for Paul more than anything, the service catalog, and how do you actually decide 
what kind of recommendations have you got from a security perspective, or how do I know what I can put in my production cluster? How can I? A lot of effort we have is around saying, well, that's suitable. That image, we can certify it. Mm -hmm. That can go in the service catalog. That can't. It's great allowing all this autonomy for developers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we find that it's the same group of people doing the merging code review, and they're just becoming under more and more pressure to do the quality right. control. And Sounds how do we like, yeah. handle that side of it? It's not just a technology problem. A bit like Graphia's. Paul, you, you okay? Yeah. So that's a really good question. Um, I, I kind of look at the, if I play the movie forward, like six, 12 months in an organization like financial services yeah. that uh, has important requirements for audit and tracing, yes. Yes. that I start looking at things like um, services that you might integrate with service catalog as things that themselves have to be certified. Yes, and this is kind of where go we're through, starting, but it like just doesn't gold. scale very well, just you know, having to certify everything. It just, you know, we'd like something, you know, how do I carry on from that and make this scalable so that I can actually put in the number of services that we'd like to put on the platform, mm -hmm. passing all those audit requirements, et cetera. Yeah, well, thanks. so presumably, um, a lot of the services that you might choose to integrate are ones that you already have. Yeah. And they're currently being wired together via like some form of credential sharing, right? Yeah. Or I'm sure not in anybody's organization here, but maybe Post-it note. So there's already